my name is Zachary Sturja. I'm here at the festival to screen my film Winter Morning, uh, which is a love story about friendship and identity. Let's go. Let's go. Så två planta. Tifter. Kan du läsa? Tabletter. Nice. Seriöst reda stoffer. So you also already had a screening on the Ferries Islands, mm. and well, people fainted. <laughs> and apart from that, how was the, how did they? Well, what did they say about the movie? How was it perceived? Uh, really good. Uh, it was. Uh, I think people were very happy about it. Um, and uh, I was like, I was kind of expecting like there would be a bit of controversy about it, uh, but there wasn't. I mean, like ev everyone like accepted it. Mm -hmm. And like uh, the first screen, I mean, like it's a coming of age film, but uh, the first screening was at a local library in my home, my neighbor town. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the average age was like 60 or something like that. <laughs> so, but but they really liked it. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think it's a, I think it's a. I think somehow it's a story that is like stronger than the viewer's prejudice. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I'm very happy about that. Mm -hmm. But, well, several questions. I mean, are there a lot of movies done on, in the Faroe Islands? And are there a lot of young people? Because you said that most people were a bit older in the film screening. Yeah, I mean, like, we have like the, the immigration of, of, uh, of young people is huge. I mean, like, there's like, Almost whole generations are missing mm -hmm. uh, because they go abroad to study and they don't come back usually. So that's like a big problem. But 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 yeah, I mean like uh, we have like uh, we still have young people there, and there are people who are making making films. But 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 we only have like the budgets for short films, mm -hmm. which is I mean like it's it's a good thing in a way because uh, I think the short film format is, is a very good way to experiment and to find your own style of storytelling. Yeah. So, so I think that's a, that's a good thing even if the next step should be a, a, a feature, like a full, a full length feature. Mm -hmm. And you said that um, there was not a bit controversial after screening the movie for the first time. Is homosexuality something that is openly accepted and openly lived on the Faroe Islands? Uh, in the recent five years, it has been more and more accepted because, like the the, the rights group, have, have done a, a huge huge job on like uh, making people understand that like homosexuality is, is like a normal thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I think that five or ten years ago, I, I wouldn't I would be too afraid to make this film. Mm -hmm. uh, because the whole homosexuality thing is is kind of controversial, and this like a a, a very like a touchy topic in the Faroe Islands. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but but I think I think that I think the LGBT community they really like the film, uh, and I'm very happy about that because uh, uh, I feel that maybe it's it's true to the like the the audience who is mostly uh, personally affected by the by the story and by the by the theme of the film, so. Mm. And how did you get to the topic of making a movie about two young girls? Uh, I don't know, it's uh, it was kind of, <clears throat> I think I was sitting on a bus and then the idea just popped in my head. But <laughs> but, uh, but I, I felt in a way that, that there hasn't been any contemporary story in the Faroe Islands that tells, tells a story about homosexuality from a, like a, a like a point of view, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think that inspired me a lot to do it. But were there movies before with that topic, or was it maybe even the first one? No, it was the uh, it was the first one I think. Okay. So it was like I, I think like I think like the question about sexuality in general is is a bit missing from from 
uh, various arts, both both like literature and and, and film. And mm -hmm. Why do you think it's dance? I don't know. It's it's uh, maybe it's because we are so few people that <laughs> the like most of the love stories get like boy meets girl happy ever after. And mm -hmm. So so I don't know, but it's. Uh, but for me, it was like it was never a big question for me because I don't I don't see that as a as a big thing. I mean, like it's just a it's just a love story and it's a story about identity. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and the theme of the film is somehow just to like learn to accept oneself and be happy about who you are. Uh, mm -hmm. That's like the message of the film. Yeah, and I mean, it's also about general youth culture or youth life. Yeah, I think. Well, you see those two girls also in situations with a lot of stress, with a lot of pressure from other people yeah. around. Yeah. Um, I don't know, is, is that something typical on the Faroe Islands? I, I, I think that's very typical everywhere. I mean, like, when grown up, you are like... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think that's a very universal thing, actually. Uh, but it was a bit like... Uh, the first films that I made were, were about, like, lonely guys who were, like, doing their things and had a very boring life and stuff like that. Uh, and then I decided to, to do something more chaotic, and it doesn't get more chaotic than mm. young girls going out drinking and <laughs> so. And taking drugs. Yeah, they're actually not drugs. They're like painkillers. But seriously, oh okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. they were taking drugs. They got drugs from somewhere. But no, no, we don't got drugs in the Faroe Islands. Okay. <laughs> so that's. Uh, but that's like, uh, I mean, like that's, I'm, it's a thing uh, everywhere young people do like bad choices all the time. And, and that was one of those bad choices that they take those pills. Mm. It's like, so uh, I don't want it to be a film that like tells you how you should behave. I, I mean, like it just like shows some situations that mm. are very real, I think. But it's it's about choices, but it's also about trying to find your own identity, isn't mm, it? I mean, yeah. I, for example, I really like the scene where the two girls are dressing up, where yeah. they're standing in front of the mirror, putting on makeup and so forth, mm. because they had the feeling that they're sort of trying out, playing with who they actually are and who they can be, trying yeah. to be someone else, having a mask on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because it is a bit like this transformation scene mm. uh, from the first scene when they're sitting in the kitchen and just like being boring and stuff like that. Uh, and then you have this transformation that they put on their makeup to, to like to look like uh, cooler than they are. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, um, yeah, I like that scene too. It's mm. uh, very sensitive in a way. Yeah. And this this generation that emigrated, or the, the young people still emigrate from from the Faroe Islands, is also part of the movie, isn't it? When they're standing in the harbor and talking yeah. about getting away, yeah. and, and then they were talking about here are only fishermen. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's also in there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Uh, but it's a bit, uh, it's a bit like tongue in cheek, uh, in a way, because uh, yeah, but I mean, like, many people see it as like the only possibility I have here is to be a fisherman, mm -hmm. and so, and I guess that's not so attractive for young females. So, uh, but still, it, it, it just shows their personal point of view. It's it's not like it's not like the way it is. It's, it's just the way those two girls see it. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's. Uh, hmm. it was, I, I was a bit afraid of like. Yeah, showing that, that <laughs> part of the film. Uh, but there were no uproars in the movie, uh, in the cinema, when those scenes came. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. no there, it was like very free of pain, I think. Okay. So something else I found uh, remarkable was was how the girls changed when they got into the society of the other girls. Like when they were just the two of them, hmm. it seemed that they could be very open and that they could be themselves <laughs> and. Yeah, also be very intimate in a way yeah. because they're very close friends. Yeah. But then when they are at the party, they change completely, or at yeah. least it seemed to me like that. Yeah, but that's that's the way humans are, I think. Uh, because what, what what fascinates me about, uh, or what I like about films is like the human aspect of it, that you can show how humans work and how humans react to situations. So it's like. Uh, I'm like, if, if my grades were good enough, I would rather do psychology or something like that. Uh, but it's, it's uh, I, think, I think it shows a lot how, you, how people like try to constantly, uh, constantly live up to the demand of others. 
I'm like, oh, those girls are here now. We can't behave like we did before because that's that's not cool. So I, I think that's like, yeah, and, that, and that's a big part of the identity thing, I think. But and talking about psychology, I mean, mm, the one girl is telling the other, well, go and have sex with him. And in a way, I see that she sort of wants to help her. Yeah. But on the other hand, I also had the feeling that it is a bit sadistic what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we called that in the screenplay, we called that scene like the Judas kiss. Ah, or we yeah. did like, uh, the, the soundtrack was called that uh, originally. Uh, because uh, she's, I'm like, I don't know whether she tries to help her by giving her a good advice. I mean, like, it's obviously a very bad bad advice that she gives her, but but it's it's more like she's pushing her in a direction just to like, change something and and yeah and this like uh, and 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 it's not a very natural thing to do i think you you only do that when you're very like confused and mm. very very uh, yeah insecure actually mm. so and what i also found interesting in that scene was was the boy who actually had a girlfriend but that was just like yeah okay i'm going with you and there was not even debate about or it didn't seem that he had any moral debate inside of him if he's doing or not no. No, I mean, like, if I was a 16-year-old boy, I would, no, <laughs> no, but it's, uh, yeah, I think it, I think the boys in the film are, like, they don't play a big part. They are just, like, almost like objects, uh, which I find kind of funny. Uh, but, but, I mean, like, when you have so short time to tell a story, you have to, like, exclude a lot of things. And, like, one thing that we excluded there was, like, his decision making if he should go with her or not mm -hmm. this like just like yeah but you thought about having that scene in there yeah yeah i thought about it yeah. but but I, I didn't find it with, uh, that it would support the story that well because it is about her and it is uh, mm -hmm. it is about her journey to, to a night you were already saying that the boys are sort of objects in the movie would you also say that the girls are liberated in the way or is it rather that they still have those social boundaries those so social norms that they are under and that they have to fit in or are they breaking yeah. free in the end finally yeah i think they are like on, on the edge of the social norms and boundaries all the time mm -hmm. and uh, i like it that it's there it's it's at the like it's at the edge of what is socially acceptable mm -hmm. uh, Yet they're not still liberated totally. They're like they still have like their their stigmas and, and stuff like that. So so yeah, I like it that it, it's it's just like on the border of being free, but still they're like. Mm -hmm. And I mean that is not only sexual. That is also with taking those pills and yeah, drinking yeah, yeah. alcohol and so forth. Yeah, it's all the time in, in, yeah. in the film. So. And what I found interesting is um, also the party atmosphere. In, in the movie. I mean, is that a typical house party of young people in the fairy silence? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, I don't know if they would play that kind of music mm -hmm. uh, today, but, but, uh, but I like the atmosphere it created. Yeah. Uh, it is like, it is very strange in a way. Uh, and uh, we were like discussing it, like, would you believe that if you heard that music at a party? Yes, I probably do. Okay, that's fine. Then we, <laughs> so it's like it's a bit like that, but, uh, mm -hmm. but I think it. But music plays a big part in the film. I, I mean, like there's a lot of music in the film mm -hmm. uh, compared to a lot of other films. There's like a huge amount of music, uh, and I decided to do that because uh, I, when I remember growing up, there was like always a disc man or a music playing from the radio or something like that. So. So I think music is a very, very big part of growing up nowadays mm. because music is always present almost. So. Yeah, yeah, and it also reflects emotions a lot. Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. Wow. Um, I, yeah. No, because I, I think like when, when, when young people are feeling emotional about stuff, they, they tend to go to the music and like they don't take a book and read it. I mean, like mostly people don't, mo mostly young people, they go, they seek out music for their emotions. Mm. So it was like, that was the idea behind it. Mm. Um, probably one of the most emotional scenes, the very last one, was very, um, well, I would say also very intimate, but that was also on the edge of something because I was not sure in the end if it was an open ending or not. Good. And <laughs> so that is also what you wanted, that people are not sure if, if yeah. it is. 
Yeah, because I mean, like you have like a film that's like less than 20 minutes, and yeah. you really, you really can't just like shut the film off completely when the rolling credit starts. Uh, so I really like that it has a chance to live inside people's head after they leave the, the screening room. Mm -hmm. So, so I like I like to have open endings. Okay. And it's very like it's only me and my cinematographer and the two actors who know the real story about what actually happens there. Because I like it, I like people to, to, to make their own decisions. So I guess you also do not want to tell us the real story. No. <laughs> okay. Um, do you have any new projects at the moment? Uh, yes, I'm. I'm currently. I'm like I, I don't have a budget for, for a new project. So so I'm working on a. I'm working on a project that is like free of charge and it's like it has no budget, but it involves like practicing with actors, uh, different scenes and. Uh, we have like we, we did that on, on, on this film that we had. Uh, we set up camps at my grandfather's house, so we spent a the weekend there every now and then and tried out the scenes and rewrote them and stuff like that, which really helped the film. I mean, like it, it really. Uh, I think that and the effort that the actors put into it really made the film. Um, but I'm doing sort of the same thing now that I'm. I'm working with actors, but it's more uh, more like a free project. Mm -hmm. so, so, so I'm like doing that. To, I'm like just like get more experienced as a director and writer, because it's like a, it's, it's just like a drug addiction. I think that you really have to get your fix, and and when you need a, a big budget for a real fix, you you, you just have to mm -hmm. get your small fixes like from other places. Hmm. So so it's, it's a bit like that. Well, then I hope that you find a budget and um, I wish you a lot of fun with your next project. Don't get uh, too addicted because addictions, you know, drugs and so forth. Um, well, thank you very much for the interview and enjoy the film festival. Thank you.